Good evening. My name is Yi Yun Lee, and I'm a Chinese writer living in America. And I'm going to read a, a small excerpt uh, from my novel, and I'm going to read in English. The day started before sunrise, on March 21st, 1979. When Teacher Gu woke up and found his wife sobbing quietly into her blanket, a day of equality it was. Also, it had occurred to Teacher Gu many times when he had pondered the date, the spring equinox, and again the thought came to him: the daughter's life would end on this day, when neither the sun nor its shadow reigned. A day later, the sun would come closer to her and to the others. On this side of the world, imperceptible perhaps to dull human eyes at first, but birds and worms and trees and rivers would sense the change in the air, and they would make it their responsibility to manifest the changing of seasons. How many miles of river melting, and how many trees of blossom blooming would it take? Would it take for the season to be called spring? But such naming must mean little to the rivers and flowers, when they repeat their rhythms with faithfulness and indifference. The date set for his daughter to die was as arbitrary as her crime, determined by the court of being an unrepentant counter-revolutionary. Only the unwise would look for the significance in the random date. Teacher Gu willed his body to stay still and hoped his wife would soon realize that he was awake. She continued to cry. After a moment, he got up bed and turned on the only light in the bedroom, an aging 10-watt bulb. A red plastic clothesline ran from one end of the bedroom to the other. The laundry his wife had hung up the night before was damp and cold, and the clothesline sagged from the weight. The fire had died in a small stove in a corner of the room. Teacher Gu thought of adding coal to the stove himself, and then decided against it. His wife, on any other day, would be the one to revive the fire. He would leave the stove for her to tend. From the clothesline, he retrieved a handkerchief, white with printed red Chinese characters. A slogan demanding absolute loyalty to the Communist Party from every citizen, and laid on her pillow. Everybody dies, he said. So this is the opening of the novel. When Teacher Gu and、uh, Mrs. Gu, they're going to lose their daughter on this day, and she's going to be executed. And after her execution, Teacher Gu had a Um, became ill and he was hosp- hospitalized for a few days. And in the hospital, he started to talk to his first wife in his mind. So sh- he married his first wife、um, before communism took over China. And he was a nationalist, education, a philosopher, and education expert. While his wife was a communist party member at the time, illegal. So he did not know his wife was an underground party member, and after communism took over China, she filed a divorce against him and said he, she said their their marriage could not live up to the time. So in the hospital, he started to talk to her, and after he was released from the hospital, he started to write letters to her. And I'm going to read just one letter. He, the first letter he wrote to her. Greatly respected Comrade Chan, he started the letter, and then saw the opening ridiculous with its revolutionary ugliness. Even though he had ad- addressed her with this formality in his letters once or twice a year for the past thirty years, he ripped the page off the notebook and started again. My once close, closest friend, colleague, and beloved wife, he wrote with great effort. My once closest friend, colleague, and beloved wife. He read it aloud, and decided that it suited his mood. Remembered an umbrella that my father lent my mother at a street corner in Paris. 
that started their lifelong love story. It was in the autumn of 1916, if you still remember. You said, "What a romance!" When I first told you the story, I'm writing to let you know that the emblem of this great love no longer exists. The umbrella did not survive my daughter's death because her mother, my current wife, saw the daughter need an umbrella in heaven, so the mother burned the umbrella. Was there a heaven above? I wonder if my parents are fighting with my daughter for possession of the umbrella. The grandparents had not met the granddaughter in life. In death, I hope they do not have to spend a long time in the company of the girl. My parents, as you may remember, possess the elegance and the wisdom of intellectuals of their generation. My daughter, however, was more a product of this revolutionary age. She died of a poison that she had herself helped concoct. Despite art and philosophy and your mathematics and my faith in, enlight in enlightenment, in the end, what marks our time? Perhaps we could take the liberty to believe, for all we know, that this time may last for the next hundred years. What marks our time is the moaning of our bones crushed beneath the weight of empty words. There's no beauty in this crushing, and there is, alas, no escape for us now or ever. Teacher Gu stopped writing and read the letter. His handwriting was a shaky old man's, but there was no point in being ashamed at the loss of his capacity as a calligrapher. He folded the letter in a special way that young lovers had folded love notes 40 years earlier and put it in an envelope. Only then did he realize he had forgotten to ask the question. He had wasted time and space in a useless, moody letter. He opened his notebook. Highly respected Conway Chan, please tell me, in all honesty, if you were assigned to marry me by your party leaders for your communist cause. I'm getting closer to death each day, and I prefer now to leave this world. A deceived man. Thank you very much. <laughs>